Songs and stories from the Blue Velvet Couch. I'm gonna start off tonight with a song right out of the gate. You are the reason why. Such a mystery. Why we're both alone? Cause time gone in between of our lifelong dreams. I know we can't find a way to put it all back. So trust in what I say Cause we can't find a way You know why Why I believe Take my hand now Can you see Welcome, everybody, to the fourth episode of The Blue Couch. Tonight, it's all about the songs I wrote about the people I loved. Um, we have, as usual with us tonight, Jeff Manning everything. That's right. There's a lot of computer equipment. No, 
<laughs> really, you are. You just need a lot of computers and audio interfaces and microphones, and you can be just as worthy. That's what I don't it know takes. about that. Um, so I'm always happy to have Jeffrey here, and tonight to thought to bring on my lovely wife, Kristen. Um, who better to talk about the songs? I think for those that have joined the um, previous episodes, I think we've learned I've written at least a third of all songs about Kristen. So who not to talk about the songs, to talk about all the different things that I do um, here at the house, the songwriting process, and really just how the songs have completely and utterly infiltrated her life. <laughs> she had no choice, really. At a certain point, there was no turning back. Yep. You're correct. Yeah. You're correct. So, um, so Kristen, welcome. Yeah, well, welcome to the you. Blue Guys. As everyone knows, I think that people who have been on have been watching from the other side. Now Kristen's under the bright light of scrutiny here on the couch. So welcome, honey. Well, thank you. It's very thank you for having me on, <laughs> and welcome to everybody to the Blue Velvet Couch in our home. Um, I'm not cold, so that'll <laughs> probably be one of the questions that'll come out tonight. If you haven't been here, we have two Boston Terriers, and when David and I sit on the couch, they like to nestle and burrow under the blankets. So this is really in an effort to keep the dogs curtailed and calm during the show. So it is, and so Michael, little, I see, I see a little my, bit about that, <laughs> and I see my brother on. So which of the songs about my brother? Um, yeah, there's a. That's a good question, Michael. I don't, could, could we even come up with anything that great? <laughs> I don't even know if we could actually come up with something that great. Yeah. There are a couple about our I trip to Cambodia, for sure. Oh, there you go. Yeah, see, so there's that. that. That's like that's album sure. artwork right there, That could too. be another episode. Yeah. When you're here on Sunday, that's we're right. taping that episode, we'll yeah, have to get sorry. into it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he doesn't know it yet. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, Michael, little do you know, you will be taped for a to-be-seen episode. You might be a hidden track. I don't know. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I hope you bring, uh, make sure to bring face paint, okay? That's all I have to say. Yeah, he's blushing there, right There's now. a lot of people, like, calling, calling some Kristen love. Oh, uh, and they're all named after you for some reason. It's, like, it's good I to see a lot the of entire Fontaine, Fontaine clean The whole tonight. family is here. Donna, as always, welcome. Thank Barbara, you. hello. Thank Look at that. Good to see that. everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. So not about me, but just about me for a minute. Go for um, it. <laughs> Jeff, of course, right? Yeah, just slam right into um, it. <laughs> Like the so, Titanic. Growing up, I was always my 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 mom and Sue Ann and many a people attributed to my days on stage doing musical theater or dance or things like that. So when I told people I was going to be on a, you know, a nightly uh, Facebook Live video, I was getting all sorts of solicited and unsolicited advice. So. Thank you to everyone out there. I hope I'm living up to it. I will not be dancing. There will be no solos. This is I've all actually, about David McGlenn tonight. I am just his plus one and his biggest I've player. actually heard that there's tap shoes underneath that blanket. Ah! Is that not correct? Yeah. Was I, I, mean, was I, I not I informed for that? pull out a little uh, kick line. Let's do a little soft body, shoe. Soft no? shoe, yeah? whatever you want to okay. call it, tap dance. My mom spent a lot of money for those lessons. So That's my right. Dad. So, and there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears for a lot of people running me all over God's green earth. Did you say they, clogging? Clogging. 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 Wow. Yeah, like, That's like, Appalachian. Country, like, that is oh, good. I used to square dance. I mean, the whole thing. That's you know, right. I've done it all. That's, you know, all styles, right? Hip hop. Oh, I'm really rosy. See, there they come out. So this is, again, thank you, family, but tonight is about Dave. Mm -hmm. So we are going to talk about Dave. And speaking of talking about Dave... I am open and willing and taking any questions from the community at large. Anybody who has any questions that yeah, they so might text want them in to as ask we want to go. Dave. So go ahead and put them in the chat and I'll be sure to ask him. But I think one of the questions that I had for Dave tonight as we get started um, is, um, Dave, you know, it's taken you a really long time to get where we are today. You know, we're here on the blue velvet couch and we have a lot of that to thank to Jeff and some of the other people in your life. But I guess for me as your wife and your biggest supporter and you know, who looks at the budget with you every Sunday morning <laughs> about what can we do? What can we not do? What are you hoping that people, what do you hope to get out of the blue velvet couch series? What do you want people to take away from it? Yeah, so I think for, I think um, 
funny you asked me that the other day, and I don't think I had a really good answer then. Um, I think initially, when Jeff and I talked about this a couple months ago, I think initially it was just to kind of get beyond the noodling and kind of get beyond the recording. Jeff and I have been recording together now for years. I think some of it was just to get the music out there, right? So to kind of share the music and share the love. I think, though, one of the things I've noticed over the last few weeks since we've been doing it, um, first of all, it's been this really cathartic moment. Um, because, first of all, you know that part of my philosophy, my brother is probably laughing now, but do the things you love with the people you love. And, you know, Jeff is one of my closest friends, and I get to do this every week with him. Um, you know how much I love you. So I think that some of it is just – and then what I've watched now is, like, coming in and out of this over the last four weeks. I mean, Jeff and I have probably talked – I've probably talked to 100-plus friends, um, even though it's like, you know, we have 20 or 30 people watching at any given time. I mean, some of this has just been the outpouring of love and support. So I think now some of it's just the love and the support and the friends and just the texting and the emailing and all of that has been just amazing. And so now some of it for me is, you guys know, it's just about the love and getting the songs out there and just everybody enjoying it and having this sense of community. And so I think in the end, um, Jeff and I are, you know, in the middle of putting a new record out. And so I think some of it's just getting the word out for that too in the end, mm -hmm. putting some new songs out, so... Um, yeah, I think it's that for sure. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I can say as your biggest fan and biggest supporter, I'm super proud of you for sharing this with us and taking this risk and finally executing on one of your dreams. <laughs> and I want to say thanks to Jeff for helping us bring this to life <laughs> and for being here with David. And, you know, I mean... <laughs> A lot of what you see is, you know, just the finished product or what we had talked about. But for us, it's like anything when we host parties and obviously when we do these kinds of events, it's less about kind of like what happens when people see it. It's more about like the journey and the ride. So being able to share this with you and to share this with Jeff and to be able to share it with, you know, our friends and family and with other folks that are joining us that don't know us that well is really cool. So I want to just say congratulations and I'm really proud of you. Thanks, honey. And I, of course, to my brother, we all do keep coming back for the vest. I mean, I know that's why <laughs> Jeff keeps coming back for sure. Um, he doesn't get to I'm still here. Just off camera. I actually think that this is the vest that Jessica got him for <laughs> Christmas one year. So just so you know, this vest keeps on giving. Yeah. But this is from Humble Beginnings. I think... Um, I think when Kristen and I originally met, we had talked about that I was a musician mm -hmm. and I did play in a band and all of those things. And uh, Oh, I, yeah. 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 I'm happy to share a yeah. story with you. So when I first met Dave, and I know this is going to be a little bit of story time, but this is kind of fun. So I'm going to roast Dave for just a second. So when I first met Dave, he and I shared a love for music. Um, my parents are probably going to cringe right now, but I used to like the band Fish and used to go on all of these, like, you know, follow fish around and, you know, do all of these, like, fun festivals and tours and things like that. So when I first met Dave, um, he was not a fish person and or a festival person, but um, we did share a love for music. And so... One of the first things I asked Dave when we first like started like just becoming friends was, oh, he talked about how he was in a band. And I said, oh my gosh, I would love to hear some of your music sometime. I wish you would share that with me. And he was like, oh, okay, great. I was like, yeah, well, why don't you pick out a few songs, send them to me, you know, let me know, you know, kind of give me a sample of, you know, what, uh, you know, what it is that you play, you know, and little did I realize that I was going to get, hold on, I brought some props for this evening, the Dave McGlenn box set <laughs> that consisted of one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven discs. That's right, people. I got a box set of seven discs, discs of the... What did you get a box set of? Seven what? Seven discs oh, okay. of the Emitrex collection, 
which I think equates to 240 hours of music. <laughs> And so I was like, dude, I'm just looking for a sample here. <laughs> I'm not looking for the box set. I was like, oh my gosh, who sends that? But then I had to think about it. Now, 10 years later, being married to Dave McGlynn, I realized that he's super overwhelming and has all of the best intentions. But who wants a box set of 240 hours of music? Uh, where do you start with this? Where do you start? Where do, where do you even start? Jeff, like, you've also learned Trying that. to go through this. There's a lot, a lot to be it's consumed. A lot. Mm -hmm. It's so much a lot. So then, so then, at a point, I decided to invite her to the recording studio, of course, because oh my god, you know, I'd sent her some songs. Yeah. Wouldn't it be fun for her to come to the recording studio? Mm -hmm. She thought what? Oh yeah. So when David invited me to the recording studio, this was early on in our relationship. So I'm thinking he's like gonna sing all these songs that he wrote about me. And it's gonna be so fun, and it's gonna be like just this. Woo! We're having a party, we're in the studio, we're having a couple beers, we're gonna order pizza, we're gonna <laughs> hang out. Like, I don't know what wow. I thought it was. I thought it was something completely I'd like different. to go to that studio. Can I go to that so, one with you at some point? I'm yeah. sure that Norman would make that happen, but I'm not sure how much work we would get done. So, anyway, so he invites me to the studio, and he, he's gonna play the next song. And I had to listen to this song for no joke nine hours. So I'm going in thinking one thing and I'm coming out with this. And for you that know me, my ass was asleep at 9, 10. I was like, I, I can't even listen to this anymore. I gotta go to sleep. Cause we started at 3 p.m. on the same song. It was, it was so bad. It was so bad. I can't even, I can't even describe it. It was so bad. So Jeff, you were laughing, but- a mid Stally on the bell. For those that have been to the recording studio, you know you just work on whatever's on the list that day. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm not going to lie. When I go to the recording studio, I usually do like six to ten songs in a day. Nope. That's not normal, I know. But my band like practices. But the thing I've learned about Dave is that he has a lot of ideas, and he would like to get them all out on top of one song. And I was like, man, you can pace yourself and maybe put a couple of these ideas on another song. I don't know, maybe. But anyway, yeah. And so when there's poor, a different studio experience for everyone. And so when poor Kristen came, I probably recorded the saddest song of the of my collection that day. And so poor Kristen oh. was there expecting that, and then instead she it got was this. So bad. So this I one's mean, called. The song's beautiful for what it is, but not for what I thought it was going to be. So this one's called. Uh, so I thought we would do it tonight. I haven't done yeah. it yet on the uh, on the blue couch. And so right. as we were talking about it uh, a couple days ago, we thought. I'm going to pull it out and see how it goes. So Jeff, yeah. this will be a first on the couch. We'll see how it goes.
making choices and stubbornness A lack of faith and unwillingness Rest of spirit's a little lost It's trying to find its way Back to you You There's no way to know. I had no relation in pitch, and I don't have perfect pitch, but you can consult a professional. They might tell you. I was not professionally done, which is totally, totally fair. I mean, you can auto-tune anything to make it sound professional. Now, if Stephanie's watching, she's going to be mad at me because I apparently have ruined music for her, but it's okay. Sorry. Thanks for tuning in, Steph. She might not be there. I don't know. Yeah, my Alan, my phone is a camera for this. If every, Everyone needs to know my phone is a camera, so I can't text anybody. Else Alan, I don't think anybody was prepared for that. Yeah, so now that I'm on the couch, I get to ask whatever questions I want. So I feel like for <laughs> me, I get to ask you this question, and I want to ask you this question, and I think that other people will have this question as well. Where do you draw your inspiration from and why do you write songs about like where why why do you choose to write songs about what you choose to write songs about? What is your what is your method for your creativity? Sure. Oh, hi Melissa, how are you? Um so I would say that um I definitely write about personal experiences, most of them about like um, relationships with people, mm -hmm. like super personal relationships, mm -hmm. super personal moments um, that I feel like I need to share, even though they turn out to be like universal moments, but they're like personal moments for me, um, or like super personal moments that I have, you know, like even with God also, um, but they're all like things that I feel like I've either felt or shared that I feel like are super important to share. Mm -hmm. um, and like, it's one thing to actually try to get the emotion out. As everyone on this thing almost knows for, except for maybe a few people, I'm a crazy journaler. And so it's one way for me to get it out without people having to, you know, mm -hmm. I say read everything in my journal, but you know, I like, I love music so much. I think it's just one of those ways for me to share some of my emotions and feelings. As if like you guys live with me, so I, it's like not I don't share my emotions and feelings enough. But <laughs> I think sharing it through music is something that has been, I mean, it, I've experienced music in such a personal way. For me to be able to do it and share it is like really important to me. So, yeah. yeah. I get it. Yeah. As somebody who lives with you, for the creative process, I would say that if anyone 
cares? You know, as I watch Dave, you know, go through his process, I would say that, you know, I'm obviously one of those people that you write about and sing about. And there are certain things that I feel comfortable with sharing. And then there's some things that I feel like is just a private moment for us. But I would say that, you know, as I listen to you create music and because you're so inclusionary with me and we, I, I mean, I hate to say we write songs together because we really don't, but a lot of what you create, you run by me. How does this sound? What do you think about this or certain things? So I always feel very blessed to be part of that process. And then I also like the fact that when you do create songs about things that are really, you know, personal for us, that you always talk to me about it and bring me part of the process. And so I want to thank you for that because I think it's really, um, it's special because it can be very vulnerable, you know, like when obviously you're vulnerable because you're putting out your music and your feelings, but it's vulnerable for me as your wife to have all these songs written about me. And then, you know, there are really special pinnacle points of our relationship, whether it's high, sometimes it's low. Um, so, you know, like that's just a lot. That's, a, that's, that's really raw. And, there are moments in time. And I would also say that a lot of your songs that even though they may have been created at a moment in time, I was thinking about this on the way when I was driving home, trying to reflect and transition from the work day to try to be able to be here to support you tonight. I was thinking that a lot of the music that you create, while it was created for a moment in time, it lives on in new moments that happen throughout the course of the day, our lives, or I think about with other people and other moments that they're going through. So I just think that that's a really unique place and space to be. Yeah, I mean, so I think, I think like, that that's a gift. I mean, you have a true, true gift, and it's a really big talent. Thanks. So. Well, I'd say a couple things. First, I think that's how I feel about songs, right? That's how I feel like anyone who connects with music feels. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like the fact that I've said this to Ricky, I've said this to other people I've played with, the fact that I'm able to even bring some of that back into the music community, knowing how important music has been to me, how it's changed my life, how it's saved my life, how it's been such a important way for me to connect to the things around me. So to just be able to do some of what you just described is like, you know, super important to me. I think the other thing that you talked about is you talk about it with you. It's what I do with Jeffrey also, right? It's what I do with Brandon. It's what I do with these folks. I mean, you know, the minute I met Jeffrey, Jeffrey knows that I need to be around super creative but super positive, loving people. He's only included those people in my life because he knows it's so vulnerable. There's such a rawness to it. Like, even when the guys first got together to play some of the songs, they would give me a hard time about how my lyrics are, like... Some of them couldn't even write. I mean, remember those first rehearsals? They were like, hey, what about the hotel song? Or, hey, what about that song? Like, so to your point, it is a different thing. It's not just... Mm -hmm. And they're all about people, like real people in my life. It's not just like I'm writing a song. So it is that for sure. Yeah, so what yeah. song are you going to play with us now? Moments. People, people are probably like, shut up, just play the music. <laughs> yeah. So I think which this... I can appreciate. Yeah, so I so think this next... what song next? I think I'm going to play a song called Moments, right? Okay. I probably should tune a little, Jeff. Jeff, this is going to annoy you. Me, 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 me. I'm just kidding. He's got to go get one, right? Yeah, it's called Moments.
happened to us so suddenly I went about with a lot of wine And it made us feel so comfortable And losing all of our inhibition So I followed you back to your room Where no one else could see And we shared these crazy feelings Made our heads been around Moments like this can never last And fragile things that break apart And just when you think you know That's when you start to know Cause moments like this can break your heart Ask me if I loved you. I didn't do that in real life. Could we just run away. I did that in real life. But the answers to that question come down to a choice you made. For now, I'm just your moment. I'm not your every. Despite your best intentions, it's gonna take risks to be more. Moments like this never last. And fragile things that break apart. And just when you think you know, that's when you start to know. Cause moments like this will break your heart. Oftentimes I've wondered Do you ever think of me? And those special moments And all those things we could be Moments like this never last And fragile things that break apart when you think you know That's when you start to know Cause moments like this Can break your heart Cause I know these moments Broke your heart Cause I know these moments Broke your heart Cause I know these moments I know these moments broke your heart. Songs never did give nothing to the dead man. Didn't, didn't already have. Because never was a reason for the season. The drama comes together. I know these moments, moments. I know these moments, moments broke your heart. Cause I know these moments, moments broke your heart. Cause I know these moments, moments broke your heart, broke your heart. Yeah. All right. Great. Jeff, we're getting, um, we're getting, um, comments on the sound. I think that comes down to you back in the back. Like I said, it's just all <laughs> smoke and mirrors. By that, I mean Macintosh computers. <laughs> and um, got a yeah, pretty sick rig back here. But, you know, anybody can buy stuff. That's really, you know, you can. Yeah, but anybody can 
everybody can buy stuff, but not everybody has the talent. <clears throat> it's I really don't know what I'm doing, actually. It's all smoke and mirrors. I'll add myself to this. Oh, hey. Oh, Jeff. Oh, my God. It's been 30 minutes since you last saw me. <laughs> Popped in at the beginning, and that was it. Anyway, no, it's not. It's n I'm learning as we go. I know it seems like I knew something, but I really didn't. I have never operated a TV show. I wouldn't even call this a TV show. It's an internet thing. I don't know what, whatever it is. Um, or I've never actually used a computer before I did this show. <laughs> I don't know how I pulled it off, but I did it. You're doing a great job, Jeff. It was all vinyls, what vinyl records. What does everybody say about Jeff's job for bringing this to light? I don't do need like compliments. Do we like the cameras? Do we like the films? I think he's doing a great job. Uh, what? Oh, Michael loves oh, my voice. Can't buy that velvet voice. Don't worry, I'll whisper sweet nothings in your ear soon. Soon enough, Michael. This is the tuning sequence. The tuning <laughs> brought to you by what I've been told to say is Taylor Wines. <laughs> Taylor oh, Wines. Yes. Good. Only the best for David's tuning sequence. <laughs> That's right, tonight. Yeah, where? Taylor Wines, Napa Valley. Napa Valley. Never been there. Delicious. Heard, heard about it in books because I don't know about computers. Only books, uh, National Geographic, um, Reader's Digest, all the best stuff. I actually did read Reader's Digest as a child. I like the funny parts. I don't know if it had an effect or not. Probably not. So, oh, are you almost? It's, I think I'm ready. That's the lowest yeah. string. That, oh, what are we doing oh, now? Oh, here we go. I think I'll play another song. Do it up. Yeah. What do you think?
jump a hallelujah. You jump a So it's actually funny because today I invited a coworker in to help me with my um, with a business challenge that I was working at on work at at work on work at work and when he, the person came in they asked me they're like well, what's that and I pointed immediately to my niece Reese and I was like oh that's my niece Reese you know talking about how great nieces niece Reese is and um, they were like no well, what's that and it was actually the heart and the puzzle, oh, the puzzle. and the, yeah, right. the, the, the gift that we gave out mm -hmm. on our rehearsal dinner I'll call it which is really our garden party for our guests when they came the to wedding. our wedding mm -hmm. and you surprised me with this song mm -hmm. um, as a wedding gift and then you had a puzzle that was curated from a friend of ours, Sarah Jane Lapp, mm -hmm. um, with the music and the lyrics on the back that said hallelujah and all of the lyrics with our wedding date on it as like a gift. Um, and they were like, that's so cool. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of great. My husband's awesome, <laughs> you know? But um, it was just a really cool moment because I don't really get to tell people that much of that story, let alone do they come into my office to see some of the, the oddities, if you will, that I have in my office, unlike how you have in your office. But it was just a nice story to go along with that because it literally happened to me today is a coworker came in and asked me what that was and it was, thought it was funny because it, is funny. it was you know it was the trinket from our wedding to our wedding guests so thank you it's a really special song thanks yeah so as Kristen said that song is called hallelujah um, and it's a song that I wrote for Kristen for our wedding so that was like our wedding song yeah um, and like she said all those things that she said people that came got it as a as a <laughs> I know Alan, it is, a, it is a crazy puzzle. Sarah is a master puzzle maker, um, and so those can be kind of crazy. That 10-piece puzzle, um, cat, dog, man, woman, you might want to, you know, you might go down that road, Alan, you know, something to figure out. We could take the puzzle as the next step. Um, but yeah, it's a, it was really cool to kind of have this gift um, to kind of give to Kristen. Um, Jeff and the crew helped me record it. You know, the, as I said in a previous episode, my um, couple of my friends played some of the arrangements. It's been fun. The music, as I said in the intro leading into this whole episode, the music has infiltrated Kristen's life because it's like my life. So um, it's kind of all around us everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's kind of fun for yeah. me. <laughs> I will not lie. Michael, I'm glad you like that song. Um, I will not lie. So not only has David made songs and created songs, much <laughs> oh, of which go. you've heard tonight. <laughs> but there was at going. one point when Dave went way off the reservation. It went too far. Cuckoo, cuckoo. 
where he started to do these like spoken word poems and send me his voiceover of all these poems. And it was incredibly intense. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's funny because we got married in Martha's Vineyard where there was a lighthouse. But all I just remember is this one, this one spoken word that was like, the lighthouse. Jeff, you would have liked these. As the storm comes into the beach, my love for you. I was like, oh, this is too much. You would have enjoyed those. This was way, way, way too much. So my brother, my brother and Alan, his best friend, are dying to get their hands on those actual copies. Oh, I'm sure. I'm in sure. In perpetuity, they will go to me with the grave. Um, however, we're at about 8:46, and I promise people the ability to ask me questions that I would um, ask David. So, if there's any questions out there that you have for David that you would like to ask. Go ahead and put it in the chat, and I'll be sure to ask him tonight. Um, you can ask me as well. Um, and we will go ahead to a commercial They'll actually break. be answered as a spoken word poem. It will. So yeah. that's how, that's the rules. Ben, you'll love that. So I see my, um, the drummer from Emmatrex is from my old band. It was on. Hi, Ben. Um, ben would love that if I did. So people who were on last week, um, we saw Brandon do an amazing thing where people gave emotions and he played. Oh, so I we, have not, I so we could one-up it. If people want to ask questions to Jeff's, to Jeff's point, I'll do it in a spoken word. He'll do it in a spoken <laughs> word. That's a challenge. I'll do it in a spoken also, word. Also, that hey ben, material, <laughs> every song that you hear every night is available on Bandcamp. If you search David McGlynn or go to his website, there will be a link. And you can hear all of these songs that I edit in my back room at my house and put up on the internet with Dave um, on the internet. Oh, <laughs> wow. Internet. Um, cool. So what are we doing? Are we having a show right now? Yeah. So my brother's asking me, so empathy, you know, I have to think about that, Mike, as I play the next song, I'll have to come up with like a haiku poem after that. Didn't you uh, pick that one last week? He I did. Yeah. He's trying, he did. he's trying to sneak it back in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, have you written anything for your father-in-law? I haven't yet. Okay. Nothing, nothing for my father-in-law yet. Okay. Okay, nothing Black Betty-ish? No. No? No. Okay, sorry, Mom think, and Dad, I, you'll have yeah. to keep on uh, Alan, I think you might be in. right. The unspoken word might be better. It might be like, uh, you know, the king's new clothes, right? Like, I'm speaking, but you're not hearing anything, but the poem is completed. Um, so there could be that, Alan, so I'll keep that in mind. Anyways. Too much. What are we hearing now? Oh, this is a good one. Yeah, so this next one, fake out Jeff, um, this next one's going to be called. <laughs> what you are currently doing for me is trying to get a clean take so that I don't have to edit out voices over top of guitar. That's exactly right, Jeff. Just saying. Yep, so this one's called Rescue Me. Are you looking at me? Could be. Emotions turning heavy, but I know love will find a way. The way we think is really gone astray. Moral conscience takes away, but I know love will find a way. I try to empathize and understand the why. Compromised by the half truths and lies that they're so desperate to believe. So, why can't we believe love? All this love, all this love. 
rescue me I said love all this love all this love rescue me well, I'm a blue dot living in a red sea Hatred tries to drown me, but I know love will rescue me. So much fear and downright bigotry, the words they say will be on me, but I know love will set us free. I try to empathize and understand the why. So desperate to believe So why can't we believe Love All this love All this love Rescue me I said love setting we're just gonna stay here for a minute. <laughs> we are check this down. out that was so good i love that song we gotta bring love into the world honey i get it <laughs> we need love in this world people i get it so no one asked any questions they yeah. asked questions off the hook, david you're off the you, hook. no you you're not reading so um i will answer Andrew somebody asked how many vegetables did you eat today so i will answer uh, zero That's not So, Angela Fitcher, I will answer that question. <laughs> I believe I had zero vegetables today. That's not true, David. You had a tomato you had sauce. Tomatoes? Oh, I had tomatoes. That was a sauce. But that's a fruit that came with meats. Oh, it's no, a fruit. that's a fruit. That's See, right. Angela, I know my fruit. Whoops. Mm -hmm. uh, zero vegetables. Can't win. No, nope, I can't win. Not with Angela on the watch. No, okay. that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. How many vegetables did you eat today? All right, so we have. So uh, no any, so no, so no questions for you, no questions for me. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff, what, 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 what do you Jeff? Have, what questions what, have you what, always wanted to ask? What do you have? <laughs> what do you have going on over there? Oh, I think all Come my on. questions have been answered. <laughs> I, I believe they have. <laughs> that oh, either my. means he's really happy or he's really pissed. I feel nothing. That's from years of playing jazz. Happy. You feel nothing. <laughs> nothing feel inside. It's happy. all darkness. Mm -hmm. But actually, you know, it's darkness inside, but light outward. That's like, exactly right. That's Jeff. what you got to do. That's kind of how Dave feels. Keep it in. Days. Yep. Light on the outside, but less so on the inside. I guess I do have a question, not for you, but for our listeners okay. out there. Is that okay? Can they seem I to not a, like questions. Can I, <laughs> can I, I ask know. a question to our listeners? What's everybody thinking about the the series? How are they feeling about the blue velvet couch? Are you thumbs up? We're loving it? Or like, mm, it's all right. <laughs> like, does anyone have any feedback to give us so that we can go ahead and we can take some uh, constructive criticism and maybe, you know, use it as some learnings or best practice? I mean, perhaps I might be getting a little too corporate on the line right now. 
Um, but let's see what our people, are people loving it? Well, people think we need to have more vegetables. See, so. look, Ben loves seeing me back at it. And Alan said the perfect number for me. Alan knows my favorite number is 42. So yeah. that's perfect. Mm -hmm. See? Okay. Overwhelmingly All right. positive, so we Jeff. we like the red velvet couch, or the blue velvet couch on the red velvet couch. Weren't we saying red velvet earlier today because it was the color of the couch at the recording space? So Ben, I think I'll I think I'll end tonight with a with an upbeat positive song. Wait a minute, we were I thought we were supposed to ask people based on the script. Weren't we supposed to ask people what <laughs> they wanted the script, to hear? Jeff. So um, I want to thank everybody for coming. We have a few minutes left. I'm gonna play one final song here. Oh, are you still wearing the vest? <laughs> Tim, I am still wearing the vest. Um, it's good to see that you've joined, buddy. Um, I am here with the vest. Hi, Timmy. I am going to play a positive song here, um, a happy, upbeat song. I, um, so yeah, what I want to think. It's called Free to Be. I think you've all might have heard it. I played it a couple times. Um, it's like what, I think when we were talking about this the other oh, night. Oh, it's one of my it's one of my favorite it's songs. It's one of Kristen's favorites. And I'll be honest, David wrote this about a dear friend of mine, and I think when they. When you originally socialized this idea to this person. Look, Elizabeth loves the black and they, white angle. I don't think that people really, I don't think that she was really into it. But I have to say that it's a beautiful song for a beautiful person. And the sentiment is just to be yourself and to allow people to appreciate and love the person that you are as an individual and that you shouldn't change yourself just because of other people. So keep your individuality and you're beautiful just being you. And so I love that. And I think that's a perfect sex way to end the show, Jeff, don't you think? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, okay. of course. Um, and so I think with that, I think um, I want to thank everybody for coming as always and commenting. Um, always share this if you can with your friends. Always looking to add new friends to the old friends list. Always happy to see my old friends. Do you want to say something, Stella? You can do it, Stella. Yeah. I'm always here as David's wife to answer questions, roast Dave, and um, you know, hear any feedback as possible. But I also want to just say before we close up tonight that none of this would be possible without Jeff Malott. Jeff Malott has been the mastermind and the architect behind all of this. And so without him and his expertise and his collaboration, we wouldn't be on the, vel the blue velvet couch. So I just want to just say an eternal gratitude for Jeff and for all of the hard work and for his collaboration as an outsider and as a Dave's wife, I see the friendship and the collaboration that comes between both of them. And it's just a really special moment. So as much as Dave wants to write songs about me, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be turning his attention to Jeff <laughs> um, and writing songs about him. But Jeff's a really talented and special guy, not only in David's life, but in my life as well. So. I just want now to we talked Dave about me Jeff. enough. Um, Dave, what song do you want to play? So, Jeff, that's a great segue. I yeah. do see some new people. Kelly, good to see you at the end here, buddy. Elizabeth, it's good to see you, too. Um, ben, I think I am going to make some Blue Velvet Couch t-shirts. They're coming up. Jeffrey and I, as you can imagine, have talked about that. Um, so we have those coming in the future. Facebook Timmy. had a Blue Velvet Couch thing that I used today. I don't know how it happened, but it literally did. So, Tim, I think you should wear one of those soon. Um, I do want to thank everyone again for coming. Um, we do have Jeff at some point playing drums in the future on the show. Ooh, we have Jeff um, the drum. We have some other people coming on. We have, um, I think next week we're going to try to get, um, I'm finalizing it. We have a, a, a great young up and coming um, jazz um, bass player coming on that I've recorded some songs with. So I'm coordinating with him. Um, he's a very busy um, um, sessions and out. Uh, he plays out a lot, so I'm coordinating with him. I also have um, one of the first people I played with um, coming up in a couple weeks. So we have, for the last few shows, I think we have a pretty jam-packed um, show. And then at the end, we have the finale, 
where there could be some pri- surprises, including, um, yeah, with a vest. Me? Everyone's going to have a vest, Tim. We all got vests coming up. And uh, then we're actually going to have a full band at some point. So a uh, few, few shows remaining. Appreciate everybody doing it. As always, share with people. Um, log on and um, go to the YouTube channel. You can hear the music, as Jeff has said a couple times, on Bandcamp. Um, if you need anything, you can always go to the website. And uh, Alan, will miss you next week, but you can catch it on YouTube. Be a friend and a follower and a sharer. Um, and on that, I'm going to play uh, Free to Be. What you want, but you don't have the strength to stay. Always find a reason to get up and walk away. And I wonder every day, will you come back to me? Will you stay away? Try to do those things just to show you every day. Home should finally see how special it can be. And I wonder, will you ever be free? From all those things that others say should be Be those things when you can truly be free Set free to be those things that you want to be Another day goes by and you seem to be the same Whoever truly see what you really mean to me And I want do you feel the same? Do you feel the same for me? It's one way. God chose to make it really clear to me. Go of all your fear and insecurities. And I wonder, will you ever be free? So stay free. Free from all those things that the say should be. Be those things when you everyone. Good night. Hope to see you some next week. All right. See ya.